Welcome back to Rap Geek. Thanks for stopping by to get the latest and the greatest trending news. If this is your first time, you're invited to hit that subscribe and the notification bell. That way you can get all the trending info as soon as it drops. Let's dive into this conversation. Diddy's lawyer, Mark Anafilo, chose to participate in TMZ's upcoming documentary, The Downfall of Diddy, the indictment for which he issued some key and important updates on his legal case and strategy. He revealed whether or not his client plans to testify in federal court. For those unaware, Sean Combs faces sex trafficking and racketeering charges following a whirlwind of other lawsuits and allegations against him, most of which remain unsolved. Diddy is eager to defend himself in court and tell his side of the story. This is despite the possibility of cross-examination over leaked surveillance footage of the bad boy mogul assaulting Cassie in a hotel room. I don't know that I could keep him off the stand, Diddy's attorney reportedly told the outlet. I think he's very eager to tell his side of the story, and I think he will tell every part of his story, including what you see on the video. So I expect it's going to be explained by both of us. Diddy's attorney also referred to the other things he could potentially explain or dismiss, such as questions about his alleged freak-offs and allegedly blowing up Kid Cudi's car. He has his own story, Diddy's lawyer reportedly went on. And he has a story that I think only he can tell in a way that he can tell it in real time. And it's a human story. It's a story of love. It's a story of hurt. It's a story of heartbreak. He was heartbroken. She was heartbroken, he said of the Cassie relationship. This documentary will air on Thursday, September 26, via Tubi according to promotional material. In addition, this decision comes as another sexual assault lawsuit recently hit the New York businessman and his bodyguard for their alleged crimes. Meanwhile, other celebrities like Suge Knight have speculated on who else knew about all this in the famous world. Facts is there, he shared on News Nation with host Chris Kumo. Where we at now? I don't care if it's T.I. I don't care if it's Rick Ross. I don't care if it's Jay. I don't care if it's Snoop. I don't care if it's the game. Man, I don't even care if it's Dre. Nobody's stepping up on the fact that you know what's going on and you know what went on. I don't know that I could keep him off the stand, Diddy's attorney reportedly told the outlet. I think he's very eager to tell his side of the story, and I think he will tell every part of his story, including what you see on the video. So I expect it's going to be explained by both of us. Cardi B threatens to take Offset to court in scathing Instagram rap. rap geek. She really didn't hold nothing back. She wanted all the smoke just yesterday. The rapper took the Instagram live and let loose a stream of claims about her husband Offset. Cardi accused the Migo superstar of threatening to take away the gifts he previously bought her. The rapper dismissed these threats as stemming from Offset's insecurity and proceeded to threaten him back with the lawsuit. Oh, now we go in the court, she announced. Court war, right? Cardi B did not appreciate Offset's behavior in months leading up to the explosive rant. She aired out all the dirty laundry of her and the father of her child. A ninja think that they can just buy a B? She explained. I love me some ish, but you can't buy me. Cardi then flipped the script on Offset and accused the Migos rapper of being a straight up hypocrite. Cardi B said, I find it real funny. Ninjas think that they can F on anything, she asserted. But when I start talking to ninjas, you want to threaten me with taking ish that I F and work my A off for. Stay tuned to Rap Geek. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Thanks. The frustration in Cardi B's voice became more evident as the IG Live wore on. She made it crystal clear to both Offset and the people watching that she wants to move on from her relationship. She preferred it. And Offset did the same. You want to play those games with me, she asked her spouse. Since you want to threaten me, talking about you want to take my ish because I want to move on, move on. Cardi twisted the knife one more time by reminding Offset of his infidelity in the past. Oh, it's no fun when mama got the gun, right? To be fair though, 
Both parties seem to have made missteps, at least if the claims by Cardi B and Offset are to be believed. While the former was going nuclear on Instagram Live, Offset went into the comments and accused her of cheating. But worse still, the Migos rapper claimed that Cardi B slept with another man while she was pregnant with his child. You have with a baby inside, tell the truth. It's gonna be a messy breakup for the two rap stars, especially if Cardi B's claims about going to court are true and Offset just might be shaking in his boots. But what do you all think about this situation? Drop your thoughts in the comment section. And we're on to the next story. Suge Knight questions Diddy's FBI ties amid court case. Suge Knight also explained why Diddy being on suicide watch is bad for him in the long run. Suge Knight has more than a few words to say about the Diddy indictment, whether as a fellow music mogul or someone who's observed his moves for a long time. He recently spoke to Chris Cuomo on News Nation about the allegation, speaking on the bad boys executives, various industry ties, the other celebrities that support him, and speculation about his state of mind right now. Another interesting part of the interview was when the death row boss theorized Rap Geek as to what resources Sean Combs could benefit or have access to for his federal trial on sex trafficking and racketeering charge. He's not a dummy, so he's smart enough to work his magic, Suge Knight said of Diddy. On top of that, he's been involved with the FBI for most of his career. He got powerful people. One of his partners, who started his company with drug money, President Obama, got him out of prison. So it's not like he don't have no moves. I don't think nobody should just count him out. I don't think he's gonna lay down and just curl up in the corner and die. I think he's gonna put on the gloves and fight. But he's probably going through a lot of withdrawals with the drugs while he's in jail. Yeah, a lot of those things are true about the withdrawals. But let's check out Suge Knight with Chris Kumo and hear what they have to say about the situation. Hey, Shug, thank you for calling back. Hey, I'd like to say this too real quick. You got a woman that works for you is really incredible. You don't find too many people... I thought you were about to really implicate her in the investigation. I'm just glad you're not implicating <laughs> Dusty in the investigation, Shug, because I can't take that. <laughs> she, no, she's not in the investigation, right, right, but what good. I want to do for her is... I want to, and look, hey, I got to do this for her, but I want to turn her on to the to this this this, this clothing line called um, Girls Mondays to uh, Sunday, Girl Monday to Sunday, and I'm definitely gonna look out for because I buy a lot of for a lot of people from that place. But look, what I was basically trying to say is this: I respect your show, and respect what you're doing, but the most important thing is is the, is um, there's got to be a solution because this has been going on in the industry for a whole bunch of years, for decades. And at the same time, you know, nobody wants it to be true. And it shouldn't have to be true. But if we don't fix it and do something about it, history will constantly repeat itself. itself. Now, Suge, you said something now, early on that I want to get clarification part. for the audience, Suge. You said early on, you can't just look at Diddy in isolation. You said this was done to him. He learned from others and it was done to him and then he did to others. To me, that sounds like what I hear when people are talking about abusive situations, you know, hurt people hurt people, that someone was sexually abused, they wind up being a perpetrator. Is that what you're suggesting about Sean Combs, that he was sexually abused and he now sexually abuses? Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right. I think he, he was done to him. That's like I said, if you look at Russell Simmons, you know the truth. Andre Rayo, you know the truth. Clyde Davis, you know the truth. Jimmy Iveen, you know the truth. So there's not certain things that all of a sudden you got this. The industry is a quick business. It's been like that for a long time. Mm. And the casting couch is real, but it's for women and men. But far from all that, I think the most important thing is to, I feel like, they should let Puffy tell his truth. I'm quite sure he's gonna expose a lot of people. I'm sure he's gonna move forward with it. But I don't think it should be a situation like the Epstein thing where they found him hanging from the ceiling the dead for the truth to come out. Do you believe I think that the truth needs to be Do you believe that Diddy is in danger in prison? And do you have advice for him based on what you just said? Well, the first 
best advice I have, I don't ever want to say he's in danger and neither should he say that. Because once he gets to the point where they feel he's going to be suicidal to himself, harmful to himself, once they put him on suicide watch, you had a right to nothing. No socks, no drawers, no t-shirt, no blanket, no sheets. You so naked in a cell as a crazy man. So he definitely don't want to do that. And, and the other advice I would tell him, you know, maybe he should get on the Jewish diet. Because the kosher meals is way better than the, the food somebody else is making for you. At least they're going to come hot. They're going to come sealed. And you got to be the one open them. That's okay. very important. What about people he trying to hurt go to jail or... I mean, one of the things is this. I don't care who you are. Prison and jail is a negative environment. Somebody can do something to them and get a name for themselves. They're going to actually do it. Or if they can do whatever they feel they, they got to do to prove themselves. But we also got to learn. We got to learn from our mistakes. Everything don't have to be a mistake. You got to better yourself. But we all know what we signed up for in life. So if I sign up to be a football player, I knew I'm going to get hit and I'm going to hurt some other too. I signed up to be in the music business and the entertainment business. If you fight the right and being a black man, there's certain things you got to look at for the challenges. If they can't take the money from you, they take you from the money by putting you in prison. That's a fact. In Puffy's situation, he should go and get his time out the way. Not no life sentence. If he can get a lesser time, he should jump on it because he had a great run. I'm in prison right now. I had a great run. So I don't go mad. I don't wake up mad. I've been here for, t I've been locked up for 10 years and I ain't had a bad day yet. And there's, there's a lot of things we can do to help each other and it's never too late for help. God bless us to, to have a voice. Let's use our voice. I had told Puffy a while back, I told T.D. Jets a while back, come on, collect calls. We can politic. Because one thing for certain, one thing for sure, he just not gonna walk away with one scratch on it. Do you, think, like do you think that we, Diddy... He can do so. Do you think Diddy knows enough that it's a very delicate balance that maybe investigators will want to know these other names and greatly reduce his exposure to criminality to time versus what people would do to keep him quiet? Number one, I've been knowing him a long time. And we was friends. We're not enemies, but we were friends. He's not a dummy, so he's smart enough to work his magic. On top of that, this man right here, he been involved with the FBI and uh, most of his career. It's not like he don't have no moves. So I don't, I don't think nobody should just count him out. I don't think he, he gonna lay down and just crawl in the corner and die. He probably going through a lot of shit right now because he probably going through a lot of withdrawals for the drugs, but the industry got him on drugs. And see, they do these things to take control. They're not doing, there's nothing wrong with being gay. If you choose to be gay, that's your preference. But they're doing this to people for control. It's a power situation. Suge. And um, they've been having the power of the, yes. I, I appreciate your perspective uh, on this. And I just want to get something very clear because if what you're saying is true, and I'm again, I'm not questioning your credibility. I just, I can't oh, assess it. I don't know. So, right. then he's got people yeah. who are the biggest names in the business. Well, you could, hey, who I, I helped him. I'm trying to cut you off, but if, you, if any of those people I mentioned don't have no drinks and don't do no bottle with them, you'll find out. I don't want you to be right. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, look, no, the, the, job, the, the job is to ask no, questions, good. ask questions no, of people in power. They answer how they choose. Hey, thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget, click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage. 
Yeah, Suge and Kumo make some good points, but still one element that Suge Knight spoke on that wasn't as relevant to the trial itself was Diddy's placement on an alive watch. I don't want to say he's in danger. Because once he gets to that point where they feel he's going to be suicidal, you don't have the rights to nothing. No socks, no underwear, no t-shirt, no blanket, no sheets. You're naked in a cell as a crazy man. So he definitely didn't want to do that. Suge Knight specifically called out various rap icons who he believes were fully aware of Diddy's alleged crime. Facts is there, he claimed. Where we at now? I don't care if it's T.I. I don't care if it's Rick Ross. I don't care if it's Jay. I don't even care if it's Snoop. I don't care if it's the game. I don't care if it's Dr. Dre. Nobody stepping up on the fact that y'all know what's going on. Your boy 50 Cent is one of many celebrities within the hip hop world and outside of it that have reacted to the vague federal indictment against New York City Mayor Eric Adams. This follows a federal investigation concerning claims of corruption against Adams and his close associates. Federal agents are expected to provide more information on the as of yet unclear charges later today, Thursday, September 26, 2024. But the New York Times reports that it could relate to an alleged conspiracy with Turkey's government for illegal campaign donations from foreign entities. The Big Apple elected Adams as a Democrat in 2021, and three years later, he became the city's first mayor to face criminal charges. Oh, ish, what the F did you do, Eric? 50 Cent wrote on Instagram, captioning a picture of Eric Adams. I never saw the active mayor of New York get indicted. The two had previously clashed over a migrant policy for New York City, with Fifth eventually coming around on Adams' plans. I talked to NYC Mayor Eric Adams. He broke down why this pilot program was put in place, and he appeared to be on point and on top of things. Now I want to talk to Governor Kathy Hochul about the laws preventing him from doing things to make the situation better in New York. Subscribe to Rap Geek. Hit that notification bell. Thanks. And where the proposed $2.4 billion she's planning on spending on the migrants is coming from. Not my taxes, 50 said. Ah! I will fight these injustices with every ounce of my strength and my spirit, Eric Adams responded to the indictment on Wednesday. Glitch in the Matrix. In a Wednesday address, September 25th. I am innocent, and now if I am charged, many may say I should resign. Because I cannot manage the city while fighting this case. I can also understand how everyday New Yorkers would be concerned that I cannot do my job while I face these accusations. But I have been facing these lies for months, Eric Adams continued. Yet the city has continued to improve. Make no mistake, you elected me to lead this city and I will lead it, I will. But of course, your boy, the super troll 50 Cent, is wasting no time in making light of the Diddy indictment as well. So we'll see how this all develops. But birds of a feather, they say, flock together. And we're on to the next story. Yeah! DJ Academics gives his thoughts on Cardi B and Offset's messy IG fallout. But who do you think is winning this social media feud? Let's get ready to rumble! In this corner, we've got Cardi B at five foot four, curvaceous as ever. And in this corner, we have none other than the alleged player offset at I don't know how tall. Round one, fight! Your bank account is mine! <laughs> Cardi B and Offset's relationship was over already last month, as the former was the one to file for divorce. But however, for whatever reason, the parents of the three are trading blows on social media. Shots fired! Verbally. They were doing so just last night, with the mother being the one to open up the floodgate. Apparently, Offset is looking to take what's rightfully hers, meaning Cardi B, and is having a hard time moving on. Yeah, the grass ain't always greener on the other side. She also rehashes the previous rumors about the former Migo MC talking to other women during their relationship. Nah, he ain't just talking, he be stroking. 
but Cardi B threatened to play those games too. Oh boy, I don't think Offset can take the thought of Cardi Party B's. Feet up to the ceiling by the chandelier and somebody else doing the spinning. But Set allegedly didn't see any issue when he did it, but did have one when she allegedly tried to do so. <laughs> hey, tip for tap. Additionally, she leaked NSFW text messages, exposing his needs for her while she went out to Paris Fashion Week. That was after they taunted each other in DJ Academics comment section. This is one big mess. And with the controversial pundit being in the middle of it, he's now weighing in on it all. DJ Academic hopped on live stream to react to some key points Cardi B made of her IG lives. He focused on Cardi B's threats of entertaining other men, as well as another post in which she feels she's too good for Offset. Yeah! Young Dolph's murder trial reached its closing statements today. The jury presiding over the trial for the murder of Young Dolph heard closing statements from lawyers on Thursday, September the 26th, 2024, which is today. But these remarks left some lingering questions. But most importantly, the court did not hear from the attack's alleged mastermind, Hernandez Govan. Instead, Justin Johnson, the alleged gunman in the case, was the only one who stood trial. As Cornelia Smith, the other alleged gunman, confessed to the murder in testimony on Monday, September 23rd, and stated that Johnson was his accomplice. On the other hand, Golden was expected to testify against his co-defendant Johnson, but never took the stand. Hmm, could that be something strange going on? Let's continue. Prosecution in the Young Dolph murder trial had some interesting explanations for this. I don't want to go into too much detail. Shelby County District Attorney Steve Mulroy expressed to journalists on the scene. But not every potential witness that we might have is necessary in a case. It's not always necessary to bring everything you have to bear in order to prove everything beyond a reasonable doubt. Johnson's lawyer, Luke Evans, proposed that Govan did not testify because his side of the story would not have favored the prosecution. I don't have the ability to wave a magic wand and give him a reduced sentence if he comes in and testifies for me. Evans reported Mark to the jurors, so he's to my exclusion, to Mr. Johnson's exclusion, and to your exclusion. And if this is a truth-seeking function, why didn't the state call him? The prosecution in the Young Dolph case dismissed this argument. He is a defendant. Shelby County Deputy District Attorney Paul Hagerman stated while defending Govan's right to not incriminate himself. He is not a missing witness. That would be insane. Johnson, Smith, and Govan face first-degree murder charges, whereas a fourth accomplice, Jonathan's brother, Jermarcus, pleaded guilty to accessory after the fact and conspiracy to commit first-degree murder charges. While the court did not try them alongside Johnson, Smith, and Govan, no former plea deals were signed, Rap Geek. Smith claimed that he and Johnson carried out a $100,000 hit on Young Dolph, which Govan allegedly helped organize. At the behest, Yo Gotti's brother, Big Juke, who was murdered in Memphis in January of 2024. No arrest have emerged in that case. Jurors will begin to deliberate this afternoon. Man, what do you think about this whole Young Dolph situation, man? The Suge Knight situation, Cardi B and Offset. Man, all these situations are very contentious. But do me a favor, drop your thoughts in the comment section. Stay tuned to Rap Geek. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for all the latest updates on this unfolding saga and more. And thanks for coming out. And we'll see you on the next video.